What's going on everybody? My name is Steven. You guys are watching the Fowler Air Gun Channel. Look, on today's uh, video here, I just want to talk to you about something related to air gun technology and something I've kind of fiddled around with just over the, uh, honestly, just the past couple of days. Uh, so I was uh, up in the shop tinkering around a little bit and I had actually acquired a couple of magnets that I guess some of my kids had ripped out of their toys downstairs and my wife brought them to me. I ended up with them and I was playing with them. And, uh, you know, I was kind of fiddling around with them and I noticed reverse, you know, the, the repulsion, magnetic repulsion, as they would refer to it, uh, when you take the two different magnets and you flip one pole around facing the uh, opposite of the other or however it may be and you go to pressing them together and you feel that resistance in there and it's like that magnetic field, you know, uh, is where that repulsion comes from and you feel it but there's clearly, you know, nothing in the space. And so I was really sitting there and I was thinking about this and I was uh, like, you know, like a spring. And so uh, it got my mind rolling a little bit and I started thinking about air guns, of course, because I love air guns. And uh, I got to thinking about air gun valves and air gun triggers and other types of mechanisms that could possibly be done with this uh, magnetic repulsion, which is, uh, you know, just an essentially uh, just using a magnet, except instead of using the side to, you know, pull something to pick it up, we're just using the resistance that it creates uh, reverse. So uh, I just, you know, like I said, I got to thinking about it and I was like, how can I plug this in? So here I have a demonstration of, uh, this is my Webley Nemesis PCP pistol. It was CO2, uh, it's converted. So it's just a bolt action that's got this little nice uh, side cocking here and uh, it used to drop a 12 gram capsule right here in the front it's now got a little micro manometer on the front and uh, you know 1 8 quick disconnect here on the bottom and uh, it'll take like almost 3,000 psi worth of air in this tiny little cylinder this is what's inside of it right here I just want to go ahead and just show you so it's this tiny little air cylinder here this is what you used to put the co2 capsule right into and I've just uh, you know fixed my gauges and my uh, my fill ports there and uh, the valve is really where it's at. That's where all the magic is. And uh, essentially, I just want to kind of show you without showing you a whole lot. Not that it's completely uh, proprietary or anything, because I'm sure a lot of people have probably fiddled with this. I got looking into some forums, and I've seen a lot of things where people are talking about uh, kind of like uh, magnetic solenoid type valves for air guns and things like triggers and, uh, and the actual valves and things like that inside of the firing valves. And... Uh, I got to doing some research on it and everything that I was finding was really kind of saying that there was a lot of limitation to it. Nobody had really fully, you know, divulged into this that I could find anyways on the internet. So what I decided to do was uh, essentially just apply that technology to one of these little uh, air gun valves here. And I started with my Webley Nemesis PCP pistol here, like I said. And uh, this is the air cylinder here. This is the valve and I'll break it down and show you how it works. It's just two halves. You have the lower half and the upper half. The upper half has uh, all the workings of uh, your ports and everything. This is the top half here. It also has this thing called a uh, valve pin here, which sticks right out of the front there. And when it does stick out, the hammer that is in here, the striker, okay, it makes contact with this little pin up here, and it you know stops at that surface right there. And essentially, that's what you know drives the air on a conventional. Uh, air gun valves. I have one here. Oh, here it is. Uh, it would look kind of like this here. So you can see this is just a, uh, you may see it better like this. I'm not sure. It's just a valve stem here. A little bit of a seal with a uh, plastic made of Duralin or some type of other uh, ABS or whatever they may use for the uh, sealing part here. But behind it, you'll have a driving spring. And this spring here creates this tension that uh, essentially just keeps the face of that valve right here of this uh this little seal here to stem rather and it just keeps it sealed right there uh inside of this valve body and so yeah when you when you make like i said the striker makes contact with it it opens it up it allows air past this little stem and up and through the barrel and out pushing your projectile etc etc so <clears throat> long story short uh, i took these reverse holes here from these magnets and I applied it into this so you see that this is empty here there's there's no spring here and uh, this is the pin I got right here and uh, you'll see just no spring whatsoever no spring in there and uh, if I 
screw top half of my valve on, you'll see that we still have the same motion that we need, the same function. So with resistance behind it, driven from uh, magnetic repulsion instead of the spring, basically what that's going to do is, uh, if you think about that area inside of there, so try to uh, lift this off here. If you think of that area that's inside of there, you know, all that is where it, it acts uh, in, in ways sort of like a small plenum area, so it stores up air right before it's released into the barrel behind the projectile. So there's a lot of different functions of that specific area. Uh, but clearing up this space where you would normally have this spring behind this uh, exhaust pin or valve pin or stem or however you want to call it here. And uh, yeah, so it frees up all that space. So essentially what you're doing is it's just like pressing those magnets together, you know. Uh, I have my stem here and it just has a magnet seated in the end of the, the exhaust valve or the firing pin or whatever you want to call it there. And... Uh, yeah, it just uh, floats over the top of the pad that has the uh, receiving magnet on the other side or the, uh, the uh, objecting magnet, rather, from that side. And, uh, yeah, that's just how the technology works. It's really simple. Uh, it's actually very simple. Uh, like I said, I just kind of was uh, fidgeting with some magnets, so this is what I've come up with. And uh, long story short, what I've done is, and this is in its super infancy, keep that in mind. Uh, I haven't done anything with, like, spring testing on this and a bunch of other stuff. I did have one, the original factory spring in this. I shot it over to chronograph one time, and I did kind of backtrack. I was going to put a heavier spring in it because I want to see what I'll do with a little more power behind it. Um, I did test. I can kind of show you a little snippet here where uh, I took the scales. I have some scales, some digital scales, and I put the magnet on one side and kind of pressed the valve stem, this magnetic valve stem here, uh, to it to kind of register on the... the uh, the scales so that I can see how much, you know, uh, repulsion, how much tension, pressure there, whatever you want to call it, uh, that I was actually getting resistance that was pressing down onto the scales so that I can see kind of measured out in, uh, I think I had it in grams, how much weight it was pressing onto it. And it overloaded the scales, obviously, so it's getting a lot of resistance. There are some things that I have that I have to kind of corner to figure out exactly how this works. A couple of things that are going to be really important are uh, magnet strength. So one thing I would really like to know is externally from a gun, can you adjust magnet strength and make it stronger? Because what I, I've done something here that has isolated the magnet, so I'm not worried about, uh, which I don't really have anything. St here, this is uh, just steel and plastic, and nothing sticks to the outside here. I can't, you know, I can't get it to stick. It's not so strong. I've seen a lot of uh, people in some forums were saying they were worried that it was going to magnetize the gun. Things were going to stick to it. That's not the case. Uh, not with this anyways on a small version. I wanted to start out in this pistol platform because if I can do it on a small scale, it could, it could always be amplified on a larger scale. Uh, however, yeah, I, and this is kind of a, one of the, this is prototype here in this pistol. Uh, this tube here with this uh, setup is actually going to be one of my more finished products that's going into another uh, stock and body so to speak right there or grip and body however you would consider this two piece uh, configuration but I really like this platform this is my Webley Nemesis and uh, it's we're just all polymer it's really cool it's got this uh, aluminum uh, valve body everything on it so it just stays real lightweight it's just nice it's compact it's extremely slim so I like shooting it it's got a nice lengthy barrel in it so uh, it's just all around a cool package, but I'm, I'm going to shut up now and actually shoot this thing since I'm kind of, you know, done talking about some uh, nerdy stuff here. What I want to do is just over chronograph, I'm going to jack this thing up to like, I don't know, like 2000 PSI and I'm just going to shoot over the chronograph. I do still have, this thing is leaking air a little bit, so this isn't, like I said, this isn't its super infancy. This is to show you that this technology can actually be applied, that it does work. Uh, I fiddle with it. Like I said, this is a more finished product. I'm uh, waiting on a new uh, 1 8 uh, Foster Fill here to come into the mail. That's like the last thing. It's, it, I've mistakenly ordered from China, so it takes forever. But uh, once I get all this stuff, then I'll be able to get uh, everything all put together on my finalized piece that I can actually really run some chronograph numbers with. Start kind of playing with uh, uh, once I learn adjusting and maybe adding some power or decreasing power, whatever I may need to do to the. Uh, magnets that I already have installed. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and shoot. I know it's kinda seems a little bogus here, but mostly this is a lot too for uh, my doc documenting my stuff here. 
uh, my work. So in this pistol is a mag, fully magnetic valve, okay, uh, magnetic repulsion valve. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I actually have to top this off. Yeah, I'm going to get this topped off because it's right about like 1500 psi somewhere on that on the manometer. So I'm going to top this off, come back, and then we're going to go ahead and shoot. I'm all right, guys, here we go. We're uh, all the way up at 2,000 PSI. I'm going to start with the Field Target Trophy Green. Like I said, this is our uh, lead-free alloy pellet here. So this is 9.57 grains. It should be moving a bit quicker. And uh, just with no tuning and everything, let's see how this valve does. 571 feet per second. Let's switch it over onto the other side of the magazine. Now I have loaded right here the 30, I believe they were 30 grain H&N slugs here. Let's see what these are doing. They should have some back pressure on them. 349 feet per second. Let's go ahead and shoot another one. 332. Maybe 15. 298. And that's the it for the... Uh, 30 grain slugs. I have a couple more of these uh, field target trophy green in here. Let's see where they're still at. 462 feet per second. 437 feet per second. And that took us down to like from 2000 to right about like, I don't know, I'd say like 11 is probably useless you probably can't see that like 1100 1200 psi somewhere right in that area so not terrible this is a hundred percent magnetic repulsion so just like you would have on a standard valve okay so cranking with this spring behind it like here like i said you know it strikes that moving it down but see now inside here we're just like this valve same thing you see that right there that resistance on that pin same thing with no spring inside us, you can see the resistance stays all the way up. You see that top of that pin still sticking out of there. And then if I just grab it ever so lightly here, see there's no spring inside of there whatsoever. So all magnetic repulsion. I don't know why uh, I haven't seen more about this out there. I know somebody has done this. Somebody has successfully tested this kind of stuff. If I've gotten this far, and I've only put a couple days worth of, uh, you know, my thinking and my, you know, throwing some stuff together and on the shop together. Uh, it turned out pretty well. I have a lot of testing, like I said, I have to do on this to really get it figured out. If you know anything about magnets, magnetic repulsion, anything like that, that could kind of help, uh, that could help speed this, you know, learning curve up. I'd like to try to figure this out because I could see the benefits to this if there could be more tuning done. Uh, you know you're gonna free up parts so you're getting like nowhere there uh if if i'm correct from what i've researched anyways uh magnets which you know the best the better type of magnets which i can't really pronounce it neodymium neodymium something neodymium something type magnets i can't quite remember it but those magnets are supposedly can hold their life in over 100 years only lose 5% of their magnetism. So as far as you're talking about like, you know, longevity, I believe that that's probably going to be a better alternative than having a piece of steel or something inside like a steel spring that could be compromised. Uh, you can, you free up space inside. Uh, it's just super cool because you know, it's magnetism, it's reverse, but it's not electronic. You know, you're not, there's no electronics going on here. So you know you're not relying on electricity 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 what or anything funny thing is too uh one of the other things i got researching was what would damage us and cause us not to work right which is why i also got to put this in a gun because so i wanted to see do some field testing you know what situations i could put it in that could possibly you know disrupt this but the only things i could really find that would really heavily affect the magnetism in a magnet is Bring it to its curing heat, which on general I think was like somewhere between five to seven hundred Fahrenheit, seven hundred degrees Fahrenheit. So, air gun shouldn't be getting anywhere near heat like that, uh, EMP or something that may, uh, you know, disrupt it. But I don't see anything like that being near this stuff. So, with all that being said, I just want to try to play around with this a little bit and just kind of see what I could uh, garner out of this. It's all just a learning experience, uh, an experiment. 
having fun. Uh, it was just a theory and a hypothesis that I had and I actually just turned it into a real project. Again, I wish that I could just tear this apart right now and just show you 100% that I'm not, you know, I'm not yanking your leg. There is one of these valves in here. Uh, it's just that uh, there's a little JB weld on there in a couple places and it was prototype, so it's all the very original things. It's one of my very original Webley Nemesis that I converted and uh, it's just kind of beat up and I was like, you know, I could kind of sacrifice this one to put the technology in. Once I seen that it actually was functional, I was like, I want to dial this in. I have this one, which the cool thing about this one as well is that um, I have, I made this one now where the bottom half of the valve that has the, uh, it has a platform that's larger, so the magnet on the bottom is larger. It just adds for a, basically like a pad so that it can hover. As that pin goes down, and I'm going to try to make this quick. As that pin goes down, like just like on a spring, you know, it's naturally going to have kind of some wobble toward the top. So if this is where it's at, it, it kind of floats down like that before it goes back up into its little uh, guided spot there where this pin rides. And with that being the case, I wanted the pad to be larger than the one that's riding in the back of the pin. That way, as it does its little dance going down, it still has that repulsion from you know a wider area of pushing it back up. So, anyways, blah blah blah, science, right? Cool stuff. It's always fun. I'm always out here messing around with these air guns. I am still making videos. It's just hard to get all this stuff edited and put out. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Again, I'm tinkering with this. It's all in its infancy. If you know more about it, please leave some comments below. Leave me any kind of links or anything. You can email me at fowlerairguns at gmail.com. Anything that you could provide that maybe could help me to get, you know, past the curve on us a little bit, that'd be cool. Uh, if you got ideas, if you want to build your own thing and show me what you've come up with and maybe you could uh, outdo it or perform it and I could learn something from you or however be the case, that'd be awesome. If you like this video, guys, do me a favor. Just give it a thumbs up, okay? And subscribe so more folks can see this footage, guys. And as always, I will see y'all on that next one.